The straw bale is a big block. And there's <coughs> any number of different ways to stack them up to get a wall. I think I was just trying to count, and I've probably, I don't know for sure, but I've probably worked on about 15 or 16 um, buildings that included straw bale walls as some or all of the wall. And I've probably used at least five different systems for assembling the bales in the wall. So pretty much you need to figure out how to get the bales into the wall and have them stay put, at least until you get them plastered over. That's the, that's the basics. And there's a lot of ways to accomplish that. Um, and you saw some, pretty much everybody saw the video last night. So you saw a few different versions shown in that, in that um, context. I'm going to mention the system that I've used the most frequently, that I really like a lot. And, and here on this building, we're going to use another system, which I've never done before. So we're going to be a little bit making it up as we go along. Um, and I'll try to explain why none of the systems I've used before seem totally adequate to the, to the situation here. What, what I've mainly been doing for the last, I don't know, eight or nine years is a system that evolved directly out of the Steen's work in Mexico. And in that system, you stack your bales up. Um, you're almost always stacking the bales up in such a way as to get a running bond, just as we were talking about in the foundation. So you'd have two bales, and then the next bale would go over the joint between the bottom two. And you might end up having half bales at either end. And then you do the same thing. So the joints stagger back and forth. Anytime you're stacking up any kind of blocks of anything, that's a good way to do it. It makes it stronger, it helps gravity hold the thing together. Um, but you can either stack your bales up this way, which is called on the flat, or you can stack your bales up this way, which is called on edge. Um, you do get a little bit more insulation. There have been several tests done in a hot box situation where you're where to, to establish an R value for straw bales, and there's been a fair amount of variation in the, the results of those tests, probably having to do with the details of exactly how they were put together or how well. But typically, people are coming out with R values of of somewhere around R2 per inch of thickness of the straw bale, R1.5 to R2. So if you're running a bale this way, you've got about 22 inches, you might end up with R45 or so. If you're running it this way, you have 15 inches and you end up with R30. There are places where that would make a difference difference between R30 and R45. If you live somewhere really super cold, it could be worth it to have the extra R15. For any of us who live on the west coast, within, you know, close to the ocean, it just doesn't get that cold that R30 isn't going to be a perfectly acceptable wall system. It's, it's actually pretty darn good. Um, so I have been tending to use my bales a lot in this configuration rather than that one, working in California especially, but also in Oregon. And I would, you know, if I was in Seattle or something, I would consider this to be perfectly acceptable as well. Mainly because it's that much less foundation that you have to build. Um, and to a certain extent, it's that much less roof that you have to build as well. Foundation and the roof tend to be the most expensive and the most high embodied energy parts of the building. So if you can reduce those and not, you know, not severely impact the performance of your building, you're doing a good thing. You also need less bales this mm -hmm. way because each bale gives you 30% more wall area or something like that. 
So for all of those reasons, I've been tending to do the, to use bales this way, which is actually not terribly common. Probably more people are, are building their bale still this way. It's logical to do it this way because it's a little bit more stable, but there's, there's plenty of ways to get it to happen this way as well. The, the system that I've been using the most frequently, um, and especially at Emerald Earth, where we've built seven, I think, buildings this way now, but also other places, is that I have a foundation, whatever it's made of, that has um, pieces of wood like four by fours bolted down on the top of the foundation, and those are spaced apart so that the outsides of the four by fours are the same distance as the width of the straw bale. Immediately above the outside four by four, at least, there's a beam. So, it, so like in a situation like this, we would have set it up probably so that this beam was on the outside of the wall instead of the inside. And it could be the inside. You can make it work that way too. And then the bales get stacked up on top of those two four by fours up to the beam. <coughs> and then on either side of the wall, we'll take relatively small, small pieces of wood, like a one by two, nail it or screw it at the bottom onto the four by four and at the top onto the beam. And between every course of bales, we tie through with baling and like this and you tie those off really tight to each other so that even though they're pretty small pieces of wood one by two or sometimes we'll use pieces of bamboo they're tied together every two feet really strongly so they become very very tightly attached to each other and not very flexible you can then use those pieces of one by two as attachment points for counters, shelves, cabinets, etc. inside the building um, and whichever ones you don't need, you plaster over with a thick base coat of plaster. So that avoids um, any need to drive any kind of pin through the bale, which particularly with these rice straw bales is, is very difficult to do. These bales tend to be so dense and the rice straw in there is kind of tangled up on itself that trying to drive something through it particularly in this direction, is really, really difficult and better avoided. So we're having all of our pinning and attachment system be on the outsides of the wall and nothing driving through. So that was a, that was a, a quick explanation of one straw bale building system that I've been using a lot and that I really like a lot. Um, and that's a non-load bearing system where the bales are going in, as we're doing here, as infill in some kind of wood frame structure. I've done a lot less load-bearing straw bale where the bales themselves are actually holding up the weight of the roof. In fact, I think the only load-bearing project that I can remember working on was, was the one I showed you all slides of at the slideshow that I worked on in northern Mexico with the students. Um, where I live now, I just moved a few months ago from a place where I was living in the redwood forest and we had essentially unlimited quantities of lumber, to now I'm living in the valley really, really close to where the rice is grown, but there's no big trees. So it totally makes a lot of sense over there to build with straw bale, but we don't have a local su supply of lumber. So I'm, since I've moved, I'm much more thinking about using bales as a load-bearing wall system, where I stack the bales up and actually use them to support the weight of the roof or the second story or whatever. And I suspect that I'll be doing quite a lot more of that now than I have in the past, but I can't talk that much about it yet. The reason why we init I initially talked with Jim about setting something up like that to do here, and what we would have had to do would have been to cast or, or set some bolts 
in between the layers of 